Should we take guesses on who's going to be the first? Oh, we got one. Not Marla. Yeah. I'm going to wave at him. First thing I'm going to say, guys, is that, uh, you know, don't forget today at 4 p.m. our time. So make sure you check that. I put that on all the things at 4 p.m. our time. Uh, we're going to do an Instagram live with Master Jacques Ray, who is uh, the person that awarded both Sonia and I black belts and is uh, basically our direct lineage to Holy Gracie. And uh, the biggest reason that he believes in is the, you know, the three founders of Kata Kata and everything in the charge. Um, we will have to delete this to post that, but I always save this story as long as it saves. I always save this one and I post it to YouTube. So if you guys aren't missing any of the lessons or the Q and A's, I'm posting them on YouTube as well on Alliance Jiu Jitsu with Madison. So if you do miss them, you can, because this will stay up for about four hours, but we can't do both for some reason. Uh, the other thing is I, I guess I realized I don't think it's possible to save the stories for people on camera, the phone or through Instagram didn't seem to allow that. So that one with Jacques Ray will be up for 24 hours and that's it. So make sure if you can't catch it at 4 p.m. that you get a chance to watch it. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to ask him about coronavirus stuff. I'm going to ask him about the jiu-jitsu stuff. That guy is a waste of time to talk about what's going on right now in the land of that. So we're going to try to have some fun, uh, talk about some good stuff and learn some history and your lineage. So super cool. So we're going to start with today. Uh, we're going to do escapes from the crossbody. So this is a series that we don't do in fundamentals anymore, but we used to do all the time, uh, where we, we start with basically trying to recover the guard. And when that doesn't work, uh, or the person reacts a certain way, we're able to use this bridge that we do, move the bridge and roll the person over. And if they defend that, then we can escape out the back. And so we're going to do all of that. Uh, So we're going to be in the crossbody position. Okay. Super important. Like, there's three, a couple things I'll say before we get started. This is a super important series because you're going to learn three escapes that tie together, and they also kind of work with each other, and that's super important. We said this uh, other times, but you know, a lot of times when we learn submissions, you know, we learn these combinations or these chains. The same with sweeps. The the, the best thing you can do with your escapes is try to chain your escapes. The more that you can put those together, so that you have options. It's not always going to be like, oh, I love this escape. That's great. If the person's not giving you the right look, it's not going to work. And so you want to make sure you're able to kind of identify, A, why escapes work in a certain scenario, or like what the look is that I'm going to give her that's going to create that escape. But also, uh, when it doesn't work, where I can go next, because a lot of times, let's say you're trying to escape your bridge and make a big bridge, hip escape, everything, and then you run out of ideas and you just kind of collapse back, right? It's that where you just got to dogfight, and that can take a lot of your energy sometimes scrambles put us in worse positions. So it's good to have an idea of where we're going. I'm going to start in normal position and have my, my arm underneath her, okay? And holding her in crossbody. And sometimes here, if I have really good shoulder pressure, she may not be able to even bridge and hip escape as much as she wants to, okay? So we're going to talk about that first because we're still able to do a couple of things. We're going to talk about a frame that we build, super important idea, how we push the person towards our hips, and then what happens when that bridge and that hip escape doesn't really work, kind of the ways to create some motion. So her idea here is if I'm really tight, it's not to make, let's say I'm really tight and I'm putting down a lot of shoulder pressure. And she just wants to, to bridge and bridge and bridge and bridge and she's just doing this and she's just, man, that's a hard fight. She's, she's using a lot of energy to bridge her hips against my weight and she's not making a lot of progress. Your goal when you're stuck in a position like that, if the person's really tight, strong from that position it isn't to make huge motions it's to make small motions maybe that create a fight so she can do something little that I have to react to but that means I have to move my body so if I'm just holding right it's pretty easy for me to just hold okay if I squeeze and I lock on I want to use all my energy to like let's say like a pin right a pin 
pinning you down. That's not the best jujitsu, but sometimes it happens. If I'm going to pin her down for her to continue to make big bridging motions and just you know waste energy, it's, it's, it's a, you know kind of a, a no-no. She's going to wear herself out. So the first thing that she's going to do, she wants to make sure that she can make a grip and. She's going to control the shoulder. She's going to try not to lift this elbow past my head because if she reaches up like this, a lot of times I can start to make my way towards the head and arm position. So she's going to kind of use her elbow, make a grip on the armpit, and pull that down. So now she's pulling my head this direction. And then she can make a bicep grip. Okay? The reason that we do this first, okay, this first and then this, is because if she chooses to reach up and do this here, I can advance to that open elbow or high elbow position. And then she's down an arm, right? I take that arm out of the equation. It makes it very difficult for her to create any escape. So, first grip here, pull down. Second grip on the bicep by the elbow. Okay, so almost the bicep tendon and close. So now she's in a position where her elbows are pinned back to her body. They're tight, so I can't get underneath here to try and go for head and arm. I also, if you look at where my hand is here, I can't, I'm not able to control with my shoulder pressure as well. I actually can't put the pressure on her neck anymore. That's also going to allow her to look that direction, which is really good as far as trying to escape. But let's say I know I'm losing this fight, so I'm going to hold on really tight here, right? And she's going to try to bridge and hip escape. And it's not really going to work too much. She's going to feel stuck. What she's going to do is she's going to get on her side. She's going to try to wedge this knee between and now from here, just push that knee against my hips. Look at how she can stretch my arms. It just kind of, I always use the term ratchet. You guys know what a ratchet is. It's like you're kind of just slowly tightening or slowly loosening something, right? She's going to ratchet her way into that, to the guard. So that's the basic idea right there. Like you couldn't make this big bridge, this big hip escape. It's too much power. The person's really squeezing you down. But this knee is going to come in between the hip and start to kind of pry your way in. Okay, so once more again, top grip first. So I start with good shoulder pressure. Top grip first, bicep grip or bicep tendon grip second. Close the elbows. Now you're tight. Now I can't keep a solid grip. I can't put as much pressure down. Okay, and now what she can do from here is start to get on her side. And just now look, just even if you can just barely get the knee in, she's got a little shorter legs, but even, even I can do this to her, right? Get the knee in. I'm trying to stay tight. Now she's using that to kind of push, stretch, push, stretch, push, stretch. Okay. The control of this arm stops me from shoving that leg back, right? So it's hard for me to, to push that leg and move. So what I mean by that is if we're just here and she tried to put that knee in here and I was able to maybe push that by or maybe take my, my hand here and grip and pull it out, but she's controlling that so well that she's able to stretch my body. So that's the first technique. That's your jab for me. That's what's going to get it all started. As soon as she starts doing this to me, I am, I am starting to lose ground on, on this control. I'm starting not to feel like I'm in control. To be honest, I, I feel like I'm not in control as soon as she broke that strong frame, I've kind of lost my shoulder pressure. Okay, that's what the pressure was. Okay, good. So, the next technique now, I'm going to move away from that leg. That's my option. So, she starts putting that knee in, and I'm going to move away from the leg. Okay. So, I'm going to be here. She's going to start to put that knee in. Okay. I can try, even if I come in to like block this, I'm trying to get away from that. See that? So what happens is if you notice where my butt is, everybody look at my butt, my, I'm moving towards her head. What she's going to do is start to change directions a little bit now. Okay, So we're almost parallel. That makes it very easy for her to roll me. Now she's going to use a, a strong bridge. She's going to bridge up and over, driving that elbow through my chest, and now she ends up in the crossbar. This works because, and, and you're going to do this with some, uh, I don't want to say momentum, but you're going to do it, it it's kind of a, you create this fight. I'm going to be going towards the head, and then you're going to do it with timing, so that as I start to go towards your head, right, as I start to go this way, that she starts to go this way. So usually when we show this first, she'll like walk, right? So she'll kind of walk there, here, and now she'll bridge, boom, right, and 
But in real life, that fight's going to happen a lot faster. So what will happen is she'll try again. She'll make her frame. She'll put me in the right position. She'll try to get that knee in. I start moving this direction. She'll actually just swing her leg. So I'll go this way. She'll swing back to that bridge. There you go. Right? So it'll be relatively quick. Uh, as far as the motion goes. Because what's going to happen, and you'll notice this, uh, one of the things that we naturally do when I teach this is that people will stop walking towards the head as you start changing directions. They'll start coming back towards your legs. Because you know there's two things that you'll feel. One, uh, I always tell people to relax this shoulder a little bit if you're doing this, and turn this hand, palm up. So you control under like this. If you're making a grip or something like this, the big problem with that is you might roll over your wrist when they bridge you uh, and create like a wrist lock situation and pop your wrist, hurt your wrist. But also it creates more tension on your shoulder. Everybody's always like, oh, it kind of feels like my shoulder's stuck. It is. Uh, her head is actually starting. If you look, what happens as she walks is with that control of her head. Now, so go ahead and abandon ship here and just move. If you can't let go and move out of screen for a second. If you look at where my shoulder is, like a Americana, right? Like that's what it feels like because that's what's happening. Her head is here. This is holding the body. It's creating a little bit of torque on the shoulder. So really, I don't have an opportunity. A, I don't have a post that direction, but I also, it feels very uncomfortable. And so when she bridges, I don't really have a choice. I have to go. And that's the real good part about this when the arm is stuck underneath. So here again, underneath, she starts to bring the leg in. I'm going to move towards the head, maybe even try to block this. She changes in bridge. Now, if you notice, too, she ends up with the arm on the outside. So she go right to the arm lock if she wanted, right? Right. Because you already end up in that position. So it's good. Sometimes that will be the drill is we'll do the bridge and go right to the arm lock, right? So that way it gives you kind of a connection there. Try to submit the person. Maybe the bridge, like if I'm way up on points and time's running out, so the scenario here might be I pass your guard, there's 30 seconds left, right? I'm gonna hug you because I don't care about stalling at that point, right? So you have to create this fight, you bridge me over, but if I pass your guard, I have at least three points, maybe the arm bar, the submission is worse. So that's one reason you would drill that. Right? Now, I can avoid that sweep. Oh, back to what we were talking about. As I move back towards the legs, her first option is just to try to recover the guard again. So naturally, I might try to relieve the pressure on my shoulder as she goes this way by starting to follow her back. And so a lot of times when I teach this, we'll have to walk around and like stop people from doing this because it's naturally, you, you're doing the right thing. You're, you're trying to relieve the pressure on your shoulder. You're trying to stay in the crossbody. So what will happen is she'll go here, right? She'll walk this direction. So she'll try to get this in. I'll move away from it. She'll try to walk this way here. I feel this coming. I start to walk back this direction, and she goes back to the garden. So again, you're just creating a fight between these two moves. If I continue to move toward your head, that's the option, right, is to try to go for the bridge. If I continue to come back toward your legs, right, I change and I come back toward your legs to go back. To, and you can go back and forth. You know, you try to recover the guard again, and I'm like, oh no, and I run back towards your head, now you try the bridge again. So the big thing there is to maintain the frame with the hands, right? Because if you let go, if you start changing that, you lose the fight between these two. But if you keep that frame, this frame we built, you're going to have that fight and that fight consistently, okay? And that's kind of your, your, uh, your kind of go-to move. So you start with the guard recovery, you go to the bridge. Back. So one more time, I come back towards the legs. So she bridges, escapes, tries to get the knee in a little bit. I start walking towards the head. She starts going this way. I start walking back. Yes. Then she goes back towards the guard. So that gives you two right there. Two that are super, they're pretty solid. Uh, I, I always say you can't have a favorite escape. Uh, so I don't want to say it the wrong way, but uh, if that bridge is something that I utilize quite a bit. It's one of those things that uh, the more you start to fight these initial, especially the guard recovery, people move towards the head. Once you hit this technique a few times and you understand how it works, it becomes.
becomes a, a good standby. It's really good for, for pressure players, people that really are trying to put a, a good shoulder pressure down from the crossbody position, people that are really uh, active. So as you're trying to become a guard and they're trying to move, there's a lot of situations. One thing that I always tell people that's important to focus on, she's making this frame. She's keeping her elbows tight. She's holding that shoulder to her. So when you go to bridge, you don't want to push the person away. You don't want to try to bench them off. You want to keep them as tight as you can. Because what's happening here, right, she goes to make this position now. I move towards the head. She changes directions is that she's holding the shoulder. So now as she bridges up and over, so she's going to go boom. I'm going with her because I'm in that position. I'm strapped to her body. Again, by that, by that shoulder that's compromised. And so it makes it pretty difficult. The good thing about learning it this way, because you will see people that will do uh, the bicep grip and they'll reach over and grab the belt. That's pretty strong. The downside of that is when you reach up and grab the belt, you open your elbow up for the head and arm choke. So if it doesn't work, you may be in a position for the head and arm choke. The other thing about that is that does not work in no gi because you don't have a belt and you have nothing to grip. So this frame will work in gi and will work in no gi. It's very, very useful. Really, in both options, I think it's really good. Uh, same with this third one. So, the last one we're going to do. I'm going to try to go up towards her head. She's going to try to bridge. Okay. Now, if she does a good bridge, and this is always important, okay, what happens is she goes here, she goes, gets this in, I walk up. If she does a good bridge here, even if I try to plant this hand, so she starts bridging, and I try to plant that hand, <laughs> I'm still going up. But what happens sometimes is I'm going to plant that hand as a reaction, right? But I'm also going to try to move my chest away. So what we just talked about, why she doesn't want to push me away, okay? If I am here and she tries to create that bridge, so let's just say she goes towards the bridge position here and I go like this, and she tries to bridge and roll, okay? I don't have to move. So what happens a lot of times is not only will I plant the hand to stop myself, but then I'll start retreating, right? So let's say she creates this motion properly, really good fight created by her. She put the knee in. I start moving towards the head. She changes directions. She bridges. I'm like, no. And then I start pulling myself back right here. So if she keeps trying to bridge here, and here again, this is what I talked about. Let's say she just collapses, right? Boom. And then I'm going to come back into crossbody. And you created all those good fights and all that good energy. And then we lost. We didn't have a back door, right? So one of the things that she can do here now is actually sneak off the back. Okay? We call this the high underhook escape. That's usually what I'll refer to it as. Because you're going to make your high underhook, almost like half guard. You're going to go high into the arm, but it's not low. And that's important. So what's going to happen is this. She's going to go. She's going to bring the knee in. I'm going to walk towards the head. She's going to go to fridge. I'm going to... She's going to take and drop. That's her left arm is going to go inside towards her chest, right? She's not going to try to shark fit. So go back. She's not going to do this, right? Because I'm going to control that pretty easy. You just drop the elbow down. Now it's going to come up through the armpit, and she's going to escape her hips a little bit, throw herself off the back. So you notice now she's controlled to the turtle, and she can attack then. You know, now even in fundamentals, you learn how to take the back from there, but you also learn the clock choke. So right from there, again, she could create the clock choke. So same scenario as before. I'm up on points. I'm killing her. Maybe I'm up more than three points, right, to pass the guard. Maybe I took you down too. So maybe even taking my back is a good move. 30 seconds left. But the clock choke is there. So again, that could be another thing that you throw into the drill. So the idea of this, and every day I, uh, I say this a lot when, I, when we show these techniques, you kind of almost have to abuse the bridge for a while. Like you have to get really good at it, and the better you get at bridging people, it's good to have. This is where it's good to have these uh, these healthy rivalries with the people you're training. If I bridge Sonia enough, she's eventually going to give you that next one, right? If she bridges me enough, I'm eventually going to get this one where I post and I get away. Um, I use that bridge a lot. It probably took me, I mean, years of doing that before I really started to see this last option. Most of the time, you get the bridge. If you get really good at the bridge, it's a hard one to stop. But then they, there's this place that they can stop, and that offers you this last technique. So let's explain it one more time. Okay? You bridge in. So 
get the get the knee in. I have to respect that. If I don't, she just keeps again trying to ratchet away and get back to the right. Keep your guard. So I have to move. I have to go towards the head. Okay. She starts to bridge up and over. If I don't respect that, it's gonna roll. But if I'm like, oh, see what happens. I, I like lift in my chest. So she continues to bridge here. Not gonna happen. Drop the elbow. Right. Shoot the high under hook up. Into it. So now, last thing we're gonna do is just give you three options. Okay. So the first option from here is pretty simple. She's going to be in her back. We're just going to get the guard recovery. But she's going to do the inverted R bar once she gets there. So here, she gets the knee in. She ratchets. So right before my arm is, I never tucked it back in. She gets the arm. Okay. So from that position, if you need the submission, that's the concept. Again, I've got to respect that. She starts wedging her way in. She's got my arm. I try to pull that arm in, I'm going to create space for guard recovery anyway. All right, so let's say she's here. She starts trying to pull that in. And I'm like, oh man, my arm is right. Then I start doing this, right? I open up, I give her a guard. That's option one. So I want to give you guys a submission from each one, right? The second one, she's going to get the bridge. Stay, knee in, I go towards the head. Bridge, boom, right here, and spin the head. Perfect, right? She's already on that arm. She already has the control in the right place. Spin the arm. Third one is going to be the clock chunk. Just because we could take the back. And in all honesty, you know, if we're 20 seconds into the match, I'm going to take the back. But if we're 20 seconds away from the match ending, I'm going to try to choke. So she's going to get the knee in, I'm going to move towards the head, she's going to go up to the bridge, here, out the back, boom. Hand goes in the collar, she's going to drop the weight down, and she's going to get the clock chunk, right? So, those are the options, okay? We can create that escape fight, okay? And escape is number one. You got to remember, no matter what, I think sometimes uh, as you advance more, it's easier to kind of find those submissions on the fly. I think in the beginning, one of the big things I encourage people to do uh, is just work on your, working on your escapes is something you can never be too good at escapes. Because you're always, it doesn't matter how good you get at jiu-jitsu, you're going to get stuck in bad positions. And you have to find your way out. And having the confidence in those escapes uh, helps, but also in training. So that you're not scared to get your guard passed. It's just to build a different kind of confidence. You're like, it's okay if I get my guard passed, I can escape. You know, and, 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 and then you don't fear it so much and you open up in your training a little bit more. You know? You're not scared somebody's gonna pass your guard and you're gonna lose. You get to work on a different position, a different idea. But it also keeps the training going over. If every time you get your guard passed, you freeze up in cross body, you freeze up in mount, you just get the chest out. Right? Or you're gonna stay in mount. Neither one of those is fun. Right? Stay in crossbody, that's not fun. Um, or you're going to escape. You're going to create escapes and you're going to be able to stay in the fight. Right. So if, the, if it's eight minutes of training and I pass your guard in the first minute, you can spend seven minutes suffering or we can keep the fight going and you, can, you have a chance to win. Right. And that's that big concept. Uh, uh, no matter how many points you get down, there's no tech falls in jiu-jitsu. That's the coolest thing about it. You know, we can still submit somebody. You know, they could be, be up 30 points on us, but if they leave a neck out or an ankle out or an arm out, that's it. <clears throat> we did get a thank you guys for the instructional and thank you for continuing to do all these. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, uh, <clears throat> I mean, that's not ideal, but we're happy to do them. So. Any other questions? Um, that, I don't have any questions. That's good. At least not that they sent me. That's a good, I mean, well, well demonstrated It's one of those things that I think, you know, that, that's an important lesson is that you can constantly keep working on those ideas and those ideas. Escapes are super important. So. 
Nothing else at all? Well, we'll uh, don't forget, guys, we've got Master Jacques Array at 4 p.m. our time. Uh, it's 2 Pacific, 3 Mountain, 4 Central, 5 Eastern. So no matter where you are, if you feel like watching that, uh, it's like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and hammer on stuff about the, the virus and him. We're going to talk jujitsu because uh, that guy is a wealth of knowledge and history uh, for all of us. It's our team and it's our lineage, and it's super important to hear good things and positive things from him. Uh, he's been very positive through this whole thing about, you know, we're going to get back to it. it you know, it's, it's crazy talking to him as somebody who's been doing jiu-jitsu a lot longer than even I have. This is the first time he's ever had to shut down his academy. It's crazy. You know, to think about, but, you know, you know, we're all in the same boat. We're all eager to get back at it, which is good. So we will be here. I'll let Simon do most of the video presentation. She has a better like real questions. I know you guys have some hard ones to get to. Yeah, the stuff can go over now. All right. What else? Anything? No? No questions? No questions. Perfect, guys. Hey, thanks for joining us. We'll see you guys at 4 o'clock. Remember, this will probably disappear. So if you don't get a chance to watch it, I will throw it up on YouTube. It takes about a day for some reason for Google to process the video. Probably up tomorrow sometime. We missed it. Talk to you guys soon. See you in a few hours. Bye.